Hey, it's Matt Decker with Leverage Wealth Management. I am going to be tackling a hotly debated topic today, and that is buying term and investing the rest or purchasing a cash value life insurance policy. A couple things right off the bat before we go ahead and get started on this topic. I'm a huge proponent of cash value life insurance, specifically index universal life. But I agree that if you have a poorly structured cash value life policy, doesn't matter if it's variable life, whole life, index life, current assumption life, it doesn't matter. If you have a poorly structured policy, and by poorly structured, I mean maximum commission, maximum fees, minimum cash, then you would have been better off buying term and investing the difference. But that's not what we're talking about here today. Every single policy that goes out the door at Leverage Wealth Management is designed minimum fee, minimum commission, maximum cash, and maximum income. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. A properly designed policy versus buying term and investing the difference in a mutual fund or index fund with extremely low fees and actually some pretty high returns. We're going to look at the income potential that those two scenarios can generate and see which one turns out best. So what you're looking at here is really simple. We're looking at a 45-year-old male, and this is, in the index life world, this is a super preferred non-tobacco rate. All of our index universal life insurance values are over here on the right-hand side. So this is our IUL. And these columns in the middle here, this is going to be our index account coupled with our term insurance death benefit. So all we're really doing here is matching the term insurance death benefit with the starting death benefit of the index universal life insurance policy. So you can see that those two things match. We're looking at the year end account value of our equity account, our index fund, and the term insurance is costing us, that's column two, $1,385 a year. So $30,000 a year is going into our index universal life insurance policy that's generating the $713,000 death benefit. That's easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same $30,000. We're going to split it up into $1,385 into the term policy. And the other $28,615 is going to go into our equity account, our, our index fund, our mutual fund, whatever it is that you want to call it. We're assuming a 24% tax bracket. We're only showing the index policy at 6.64%. And what you're gonna notice is the index policy is gonna kick out $122,000 per year for life, tax-free, with no market risk, okay? So 122 tax-free for life, no market risk. We're gonna try and get the same $122,000 every single year net of taxes out of our index fund while keeping our term insurance policy in force. Now, what's really interesting here is this term policy is only gonna last for 30 years. After 30 years, our term policy goes away and we have no death benefit left. After 30 years, of course, we still have our index life insurance. Now, I know some of you are gonna ask, what are the management fees that you're showing in the index fund? I am showing one quarter of 1%. That's 0.25%, also known as 25 basis points. This is extremely low. You can find some funds that have loads that are this low. You might be able to find it a little bit lower, but I think once you look at the returns that I'm using, you will agree that this is extremely favorable. So let's go ahead and look at when this account runs out of out of money. It actually runs out of money right here at age 82. We no longer have any money in our index fund taking out the $122,000 a year. Our index life insurance policy continues and we still have cash and death benefit left over no matter how long we go all the way out to age 95 we still have 700,000 in death benefit 700,000 in cash and we ran out of money in our index fund almost 15 years ago now again this is assuming in the IUL no market risk because there is no market risk and 6.64%. Now I told you what the fees were in the managed account, 0.25%. The next logical question is, okay, well, what did you use as a growth assumption? So let's go ahead and look at that because that's probably the best part of this entire comparison is what did I use as a rate of return? And what I did is I said, give me random returns between negative 30% and 60% 
between ages 45 through 64, and then at age 65, I want you to show me negative 2 to 9% for life. And so that's what it's doing here. It's spitting out for the first several years between negative 30 and 60. And look at some of these returns. There are some massive returns in here. Here's a 58% return. Here's a 32% return, 39% return, 33, 31, 16, 16, 33, 55. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years in a row, seven years in a row where you got 39, 33, 31, 16, 16, 33, 55. Your cash went from $658,000. Seven years later, your cash is over $3 million. You went from 658 to over $3 million in the span of seven years. So this is, this is a phenomenal projection. There's only one, two, three, four negative years. There are four negative years inside the first 20 years, and there are only three years inside the first 20 years, aside from the negative years, there are only three years that have a return less than 12%. That's year one, year two, and year nine. Everything else is over 12% as long as it's not negative. There are two years where you get higher than a 55% rate of return. So. I'm being extremely favorable on these projections. I mean, you're not going to get this, but even if you did, you can still only keep pace with this account until age 82. Now, once we start taking out money in age 65, year 21, your risk profile is gonna change. You're no longer gonna be able to sustain heavy losses, and so you're gonna shoot for a lower rate of return, which in turn is going to reduce your maximum drawdown. You're not going to see negative 20%, negative 16% once you get into your distribution phase because we're not going to be shooting for a 60% rate of return, which is why you see a 3, a 7, a 2, 5, negative, negative 1.8, negative 1.2. You keep going, 2.6, 5.9, 6, 3, 6. So this is very typical. This is extremely favorable. It's very typical. And again, under extreme credits, under some phenomenal growth assumptions, using an extremely low management fee of 25 basis points all in, this is all in. So this means you're talking sales fees, you're talking admin fees, management fees, the whole thing, trading costs, everything all in it's a 25 basis point wrapper fee that's it that's nothing so extremely favorable returns next to no fees at all and this account buying term investing the difference not only does the term run out 30 years down the road and you're left with nothing but the indexed account the mutual fund account the no load mutual fund account whatever it is that you want to call it runs out of money at age 82 under extremely favorable conditions with low fees and you're left with no remainder value the index life policy continues to kick out an income an income that you can't outlive, it does so without market risk, without taxes, and it keeps your death benefit in force for life. So whenever you do happen to pass away, when your number's up, your family's going to be taken care of with the tax-free death benefit over and above all the money that you took out of the plan for all those years. Again, with no market risk tax-free at a 6.64% rate of return, which is reasonable, safe, and they do perform at that clip. Now, the last thing I want to say about this. If you're working with somebody that does not know what they're doing, if you're working with somebody that's out to make as much commission as possible on every single client that they come in contact with, your policy will not work like this. It is true that if you have a poorly designed, poorly structured product, it would be better for you to buy term and invest the difference. I believe that to be true. But if you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing, that's structuring this policy the right way, buying term and investing the difference, it just does not compete with these index life policies. In fact, the only way that it would compete with these index life policies is by getting 11% per year for life forever with no losses. 11% per year for life forever with no losses. 
You can't do that. It's just not possible. And you especially can't do that once you start taking money out of your contract, once you start taking money out of your account. So if you're running numbers on buying term and investing the difference, and you're comparing your cash value life insurance policy to buying term and investing the difference, and if your cash value life insurance policy is not performing better than investing in an index fund and purchasing term insurance, what I would submit to you is that you have a bad policy that's designed the wrong way. And it's probably time that you get yourself a life insurance policy review. In order to get that life insurance policy review, all you got to do is go to leveragewm.com slash IUL review. It's my website. It's super simple. It takes no time at all to take this quiz. It's three to four questions. You sign up for a policy review. I create a customized video for you. We get a chance to communicate back and forth on exactly what you're trying to do, what your goals are, what your time horizon is, how much money you can contribute, how much risk you're looking to take. And we'll put something in place that's done the right way. Minimum commissions, minimum fees, maximum cash, maximum income and give you a policy that has a great chance of working out for you in the long run. If you want to support this channel, as always, like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, leave me some comments down below. And as always, thanks so much for your time. And I look forward to talking with you soon. Take care.